Please stand. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we've heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin and death, and that all that keeps us from loving God and from each other. This is the struggle that we've all been called in the waters of baptism. Within this community, within this church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving peace and reconciliation. So on this night, let us confess our sin against God and our sins against our neighbor and enter into the celebration of these great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. So please take a moment now to confess your sin silently before joining with me and your brothers and sisters in Christ in a public confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. You have made your confession. Know and trust that God has heard your confession and the good news of the revelation of Jesus, that God, we have seen God's heart, and it is good. So in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven. Amen. And on this holy night, during this first hymn, we're going to invite the congregation that's in person here in our sanctuary to come forward and be marked with this journey of three days through the cross into resurrection with the uh, sign of the cross and oil on your foreheads just as on the day of your baptism. Come and receive the assurance of God's love and let us sing our first hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill. strength 
of all kindness be our guide. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our all your way of healing, spirit of compassion, fill each heart. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on this night of betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. With this commandment in our hearts, give us the will to serve others as we have been served, to be a servant for all as Jesus was a servant for all on the cross. In his name we pray and trust. Amen. You may be seated. Holly would come forward. A reading from the first book of Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand as we welcome our gospel. Let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, Warm it with the day, 
when my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. Then they asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared for the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The idea of covenant is central to the whole biblical narrative. The idea of covenant gets to the truth of how God wants more than anything else to be in relationship with us. That's why God spoke to Noah and his sons after the flood, because God's heart was broken after having destroyed the whole earth and God promised never to do it again. It's why God spoke to Abraham and and established a person-to-person connection. I'll be your God. You can be my people. It's why God came to Moses when Abraham's descendants were in bondage in Egypt and offered them freedom and a way to live with one another. That's what covenants are all about. God wanting, desiring, yearning to be connected to humanity, to creation, to you and me. And tonight, of course, is that ultimate moment for us Christians as we consider God's longing to be with us, to be among us, to be one of us. Tonight, in a powerful way, God reveals God's own self as table mate. The definitive covenant God makes with us in Christ is that Jesus is present in this meal as both host and as friend. Now, of course, the traditional way for us to think of Jesus in this meal is to use the phrase real presence. That's a kind of a Lutheran phrase. We use that. Some measure that's helpful. We believe Jesus is is really here in this meal that we share. But as we consider the notion of covenant relationship that that God has established with his people through history, I'd like us to think of, of the real presence of Jesus in this meal in a little different way. 
a way that doesn't worry so much about how bits of bread and wine can contain or carry or conceal the body and blood of a human being. That's not a helpful discussion. Let's, let's think about Jesus in covenant terms, not in some theoretical discussions about the substance of Jesus' physical presence. I've been to many, many homes through the years for meals. It's kind of what pastors do. Then after baptisms, often, often after funerals, before weddings, or gatherings with, with a few other folks, or many for a wide variety of reasons. Now, as good as the food was that we shared, the food wasn't really the thing. Sometimes it was snacks and hors d'oeuvres, sometimes a, a family favorite, sometimes it was fancy and delicate, sometimes sweet and chocolate, sometimes a meat tray and potato salad and cold beer. But the point was never the content of the meal. The point was sharing the meal. The reason to be together wasn't to eat. The reason to eat was to be together. And those at the gathering around the table, always friends, family. People maybe you were getting to know in a brand new way. They were there because there was an important relationship to nurture, to celebrate, to enjoy. Whether it was ham salad and Miller Lite or filet mignon and Pinot Noir. Didn't matter. That concept, friends in Christ, is really important as we consider what we are doing here this evening. And frankly, what happens every Sunday morning. It isn't about the meal itself. We'd all starve if all we had was this little morsel of bread and a little sip of wine. And when Jesus shared that Passover meal with his dearest friends, Apparently, nobody remembered the succulence of the shank of lamb or the sweetness of the caroset or the clarity of the wine. What was remembered? Who was there? What Jesus did and those words that he spoke. God wearing the flesh of a human being was there. God wearing the flesh of a human being was there. There with his disciples. If, if ever you are feeling that your life doesn't matter, that you're only human, if you ever think that you're not worth a hill of beans, if you ever think that your life, the life you've been given, doesn't really matter all that much, come to this table. Come to it week after week. Come and remember that the God, the God who is creator, sustainer, redeemer, of a universe, sat at a table, ate with friends, drank in celebration, and said the very words that we will say and you will hear tonight. I don't know, maybe you've been at the, the Golden Lamb restaurant down in Lebanon. You've read all those plaques about the famous people who, who ate here and stayed here, this room, that room. Pretty impressive. Well, God was at that table in the upper room. God is at this table. God. As he ate with his friends long ago, so God eats with his friends now. It's no different now than it was then. It's not the food. It's the company. You remember what happened there? God, wearing the human pulp of a man from Nazareth, took off his garment. He played the host. He demonstrated service. He took the role of a slave. He didn't do that simply to demonstrate what his followers were to do. He did that because that was his very essence. In some fashion, that is the very essence of God. He didn't assume a position of, of authority or privilege. His very essence was as servant. 
Just as when in love you invite dear ones to a meal and your deepest desire is to serve them and nourish them and allow them to enjoy the company and the food and the drink and the experience. So Jesus proclaims that to serve is to live. To serve is, is to love. To give your best to another is the path to deep joy. It's always about what we offer to another, not about what we receive. Such is the truth of which we are reminded when we gather around the altar. And finally, when we remember these words that he spoke, we are reminded that this relationship that we share is a covenant. It's an agreement about God's desire to be with us, to live in and through us, we will hear those familiar words about bread and wine and covenant and how Jesus is with us. Those words are spoken every week. And if we were reading John's gospel, we would, we would hear that it's also the night in which he gave a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. You know that. Jesus has loved and continues to love us. We celebrate his love for us in this meal. We commit ourselves to new and loving lives when we come forward to the table. So it's, it's not about the food. It's about who's at the table. It's about what Jesus did and does and about those words that he spoke and still speaks to us. It is his friends who are invited to this table to share life with Jesus and with one another. He serves us in love. Jesus serves us in love and asks us to serve one another and the world the same way. So, if you're hungry, if you want a relationship with God, if you want to be friends with God, if you desire strength to love and to serve, then this meal is for you. It is a meal for servants and friends. Amen. Our choir will come forward to give a good gift while we receive whatever good gifts you have brought an offering.
Please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray. Holy God, receive all these good gifts given on this holy evening. Gifts of wealth, bread, and wine, and talents. And may these gifts bring joy in heaven. And may they move your community to draw into a relationship with you, trusting the covenant and promises you've made. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Tonight we celebrate the holy love of the Father made known in the faithfulness of the Son. God's love has been revealed in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Holy God, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image. You gave your precious creation into our care and you commanded us to serve all of your creatures. And when our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you've come to our aid. Again and again, you've called us into relationship with you, first through the prophets, and then once and all in Jesus. So Father, tonight we celebrate the meal that the Son shared with his disciples that brought the entire creation redemption and reconciliation. We trust the promises that Jesus made on that night when he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed and he gave for all to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With all the saints before us, we cry out, cry out in joy at the very mystery of faith. Christ is dead. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, send now your Holy Spirit to descend upon these gifts, making them a holy means of grace for all your people that are gathered tonight. Grant that all who share in this bread and this cup may become one body, one spirit, a living sacrifice to Christ forever and ever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all our honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. may be seated while our assistants come down to be getting ready to serve the those who are coming forward those who wish to commune in their seats and those at home that are worshiping with us the first table will commune on this Monday Thursday with you if you release that white wafer the body of Christ given for you amen The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
They're asking me to come forward. Satisfy the hungry heart with gifts of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gifts of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude. That you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come. So saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share, the blood of Christ outpoured? Do not one cup, one loaf declare, our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to Please stand. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the wonderful sacrament of bread and wine, you strengthen all of us with the saving power of your suffering, your death, and your resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood be so work in us so that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing, Go to Dark Gethsemane, hymn 347, as we prepare, begin to prepare our altar for our Good Friday service. tonight for our Good Friday service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock with this Tenebrae service using uh, this hymn tune from, for, for the psalm, My God, My God, Why Have You Forsaken Me? And the story of Jesus being arrested. Let us sing our hymn tune.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now the festival of the unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, had drawn near, and the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. And he went away and he conferred with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. And they were greatly pleased. And they agreed to give Judas money. So he consented and he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them when no crowd would be present. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus said, Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, will strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to the Lord, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you even know me. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. 
Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bullion bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus came out and he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he reached the place, he said to his disciples, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. He knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in, a band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. My God, my So while Jesus was still talking to the disciples, a crowd suddenly came around all of them, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading the crowd, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? I can count all my bones. While they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then they seized Jesus. And they led him away, bringing him to the home of the high priest. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. 
For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over nations. My God. Now the men who were holding Jesus, they began to mock him, and they beat him. They also blindfolded him, and they kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that just struck you? And they kept heaping even more insults upon him. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust Though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. 